Reading I've chosen for today is Ephesians, Paul's letter written in prison. Chapter 6 and starting at verse 10. We'll go to 20. Finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we are not contending against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore take on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your loins with truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having shod your feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of the God. Pray at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that utterance may be given me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. For I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. Here ends the reading from God's Holy Word. So we've been fighting this battle for 18 months now, 16 months. And this is the second time I have to do a video service. I wouldn't normally choose St. Paul as my reading. But I find Paul gets very interesting whenever he gives a grocery list. And we got a couple of them in the uh, reading today. He starts with truth. No, he starts with a loincloth. Every civilization, I mean, I don't want to sound colonialist on this, but every civilization that we have come across, without having an Adam and Eve story of uh, becoming ashamed and hiding yourself with a fig leaf, nonetheless, girding your loins, I mean, nobody covers the top and leaves the bottom open. So loincloth is absolute basic. And the truth is absolute basic. Now the truth is my truth and your truth. Um, the truth usually lies somewhere in between. And your faith in your truth depends on how much I can convince you of my truth. Nonetheless, that's another whole philosophical argument I'm not going to get into. So we start with the loincloth that is absolutely the basic. And then we're going to put on the breastplate of righteousness, and sometimes I've seen that translated tunic. And the boots of the gospel. I mean, boots are relatively essential, not in all societies, but certainly in Quebec in January, I wouldn't want to be without boots. And then you take up the shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. Okay. And finally, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word. We're going to start looking at a sword. There's a television show, it's the type of thing you watch at 3 o'clock in the morning when you have insomnia in a hotel room, and I forget whether it's History Network or Discovery Network or The Learning Channel or something like that. Anyway, it's called Forged in Fire. They take three um, blacksmiths, give them a challenge, and the challenge I'm thinking of, they had to make a sword. Now, it's a lot more than an iron stick that's been sharpened and put a handle on it. They have to do the metallurgy to get that... Uh, steel hard enough to maintain an edge but not so hard that it's brittle and get it to balance so that you can wield it light enough that you can swing it but tough enough that it'll do the job they brought in an olympian with his competition sword 
And you know those rubber strips they have at the uh, grocery store before you walk, go into the walk-in freezer? Keep the cold in. They set up a bunch of those and the Olympic fencer took his competition sword and he sliced through five of those strips. So there's the benchmark. First one of these blacksmiths, he took a couple of old bolts and this, that, and the other thing, melted it all down, made his sword, sharpened it. Sliced three quarters of the way through one strip. Same swing. And put a big divot in the edge of the sword, because obviously the blade wasn't quite hard enough to do anything. Second guy, the blade was so hard, it just snapped in half as soon as it hit the, uh, the first strip. Barely took a nick out of the strip. It was too hard, it was brittle. And the third guy, it didn't even stay in the handle. The sword went flying across the room when he swung it. So you'd have a hundred blacksmiths in town and only one had the abilities to actually make a sword. A shield and a helmet, well a helmet's got to protect your head, got to be light enough you can wear it, got to give you enough visibility that you can see but not block, be able to block that sword that's coming at you. Be ventilated enough that you're not going to roast in it when the sun hits it. Shield has got to stay on your arm, not enough to block your mobility, but you don't have to be concentrating on holding it all the time. It's got to be strong enough to stop the flaming arrows that are being sent at you. And you look at the order that Paul lists off the these weapons. He starts with the Fruit of the Looms. Which is very basic personal hygiene equipment if you want. Then you get the tunic and the boots, which you wear. A little bit of defense there. And then you get the shield and helmet. So you have personal hygiene and Light defense, light defense, heavy defense, heavy defense, and finally the offensive weapon. Not till all the defense is in place do you pull out the offensive weapon. So I don't know, with the, with the news of the COVID, and particularly the news of late coming out of Kamloops and uh, other places of uh, the spiritual leaders having been guided by the evil one, I have reasons I don't want to go there. That is on this sermon, but I'm not going to talk about that sermon. But if you want to read the subcontext, uh, there's an awful lot I'm not saying. So we have to keep our strength, keep our armament in shape to deal with these. But all these news coming at me, you know something? There's days I don't want to get out of the BVDs. I'm going to put on the loincloth and that's going to be my weekend. Thank you very much. All right, fine. So, uh, and doing the battle, who'd have thought that the internet connection and Zoom and all these things would be as big as they are since COVID happened. Personal choice, I haven't gone in there because I also know myself with an internet connection, I'd spend five hours a night watching cat videos. My shield and helmet have been a ukulele and work in the shop. And I know others that will settle with a book or do some needlepoint or whatever happens to be the... Maintain the faith and maintain your salvation Maintain your sanity, which is more than just curling up in the BVDs. And finally, the offensive weapon, that if all these things are in place, we can take up the offensive weapon. And the offensive weapon that has been given us for this fight against this disease is the shot in the arm.
wielding a sword also is not the easiest. Uh, as I said, they brought in an Olympian who knows how to wield a sword on that program. They didn't... Uh, Another reference I want to drop. This technology would have been just about the highest that people in Ephesus would see. They would see soldiers in the street in full battle gear on a regular basis. So they would be able to relate to it in a way. Um, would be the highest technology they would see. And throughout history... Leading edges of technology have been military. There's a, there's a book by a couple by the name of Giles or Giles, I'm not sure. It's been a while since I've seen the book, but it's called Cathedral, Forge, and Water Wheel. It speaks of the Industrial Revolution up until 1761. Which is an interesting date they chose because the Industrial Revolution started, the official Industrial Revolution started in 1762 when James Watt invented the steam engine. They talk about all the machinery and everything else. Now, until the steam engine came along, your machine was powered by hand. You had a dog running in a wheel to power something. You had a water wheel, sometimes you had a water wheel, sometimes you had a windmill. You were lucky if you had those. Or you would have to turn the hand crank. So Cathedral Forge and Water Wheel, the most impressive building for centuries, was the cathedral. Would have been true in Ephesus. Would have been true, I mean, the pyramids were built towards the worship of God. The, um, the loom was a very impressive piece of machinery. In the 1500s, they were finding looms that had nine combs in them. So they were making very complex materials with this machine. And the machine, of course, gets more complex to make them. And um, an early episode of The Nature of Things was called uh, Voices in the Wind. It spoke of the uh, pipe organ, which would be in the cathedral and was pre-industrial, pre-modern industrial revolution, if you will. And it was the most complex machine known to man. I mean, a piano's got 88 keys. It's got 88 mechanisms to uh, strike each key. pipe organ, let's say a standard keyboard, an 88 key keyboard, but each key can control any of five or ten pipes, so multiply that, that it's got to do the same thing. It's, a, it's an amazing piece of machinery. Towards the worship of God. The loom is making art. And the trebuchet, of course, is a military piece of it. So the leading edge of technology all the way across is in arts, it's in worship, it's in military. Paul happened to choose mil well, he had experience with military. He was in the prison. But it was something that the people could relate to. I speak of a pipe organ, and you guys are thinking of the one up in the front of St. Andrews. And it's like, okay, yeah, it's there. You've never seen the mechanism behind it the complexity that's in there. So he takes your grocery list from the simplest, your fruit of the looms, which is truth. I mean, there is no denying that, I mean, they try to measure it a hundred different ways to get the results they want. But that's where the battle starts is in truth. Now, do we want to take a passive role in the battle, or do we want to take an active role in the battle? That's And day by day, you can make that decision.
but the uh, it's going up from personal care defensive 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 make sure you're well defended before you start swinging the offensive but if you're going to win the but <laughs> is it win lose or draw you're going to win the battle you got to take the offensive weapon at some point amen well lord it's an empty chapel you promised us wherever two or three are gathered in your name, you will be there also. Well, we're starting to feel it, Lord, that we've been 16 months that we haven't been able to gather in your name. We get together over Zoom and telephone calls and that type of thing. And, uh, we try to pray, we try to be close to your people, to your will. But Lord, it's a long and hard road. They promised us 16 months ago it's going to be a five-week lockdown and then you'll see the light at the end of the tunnel. Well, Lord, I don't know whether the tunnel's a lot longer than we thought it would be when we walked in, went into it. Well, this train's going an awful lot slower than we thought it was. But give us the patience to ride it out, Lord. Help us to feel your presence in the truth and the gospel and the spirit. And Lord, things are getting rather hot down here and a lot hotter out in British Columbia where it uh, seems the world is on fire seems there are many Lord that don't admit that in some ways we've caused that fire be with those that have lost their homes And that's the animals that have lost their homes and the people of Lytton and other places that have lost their homes. And Lord, there's more news out of BC that uh, we need the armor against. And that is the lie that some who claim you, who claim to be representing you, have finally been caught in that lie. Something that our native peoples have been crying about for 80 years in these schools. And they found 215 and they found 751 and we're up over 2,000 and there's a lot more to come, Lord. There's a lot more to come. And for these people that survive this, that they see that the God that was represented to them was not you. That they were lied to. And there's a lot that would say forgive and forget. Well, forgiveness is awful, de awful dependent. I'll forgive you for wronging me if you stop wronging me. And Lord, we need our leaders to admit that they have wronged and to take action to stop wronging. And in that we also need to trust our leaders as they tell us that we are getting to the end of the tunnel. It's been a long ride. And uh, it's not over yet. We're getting there. But it's a lot less than 
We're going to stop the train and back up at this point? I don't think so. I don't think so. We just have to keep on going and hold on to our truth and our gospel and our faith and pull out that sword of the Spirit to help us carry on, Lord. Be with us. And as we say every Sunday, well, as we say every day, Thy will be done. Help me do thy will. Amen.